So we were we were working through a script here, and I was putting stuff. I was trying to update it to instead of using the command stir uh, string split, uh, adapt it to the function string split. And Isaiah was going to expand on here and how they're returning kind of different things. One's a pseudo array and runs a regular array. That's right. Like. Yeah. So so now the thing is that when when you use string split like this, this f variable would be an object it would be an array and that's the reason why you would call it like f2 mm -hmm. now my intuition would tell me that this would fail here because i don't have i don't have a pseudo array right? right but now what you want to do is go ahead and do this on the top which would actually create a pseudo array down there right so that's and 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 your surprise is that it isn't doing it Right. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that works. I'm trying to adapt it to use an array instead of the pseudo array. Well, to use the, the function instead of the command. Oh, so, so sorry. The first one on the top compared to uh, using lines 42 to 46 work perfectly fine. Right. right. And you want to convert them now to right. this uh, right well, here. Uh, well, more, more to the point, I want to convert it to using line 36. And then, however, you're right. right. I have to adapt the bottom part to make it work. So, yeah. So that I, would be. I was playing to make sure I understood because I don't use that the the menu command like the, the, the how he's written the, the if equal the if and, equal the the reason why I don't use it either is because you cannot go ahead and use right. a, a, a value there. You would have to say at some point if right. So it would be if f two equals that's what you would try to do there and uh, maybe yeah. Wait. That's what I was. No, I don't start off with right. a ternary. I, I hardwire it all, then I convert it to a ternary. Right. Afterwards. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. That's what you would need to do, right? So and and again, here we have the issue was, of a right. list f1. That was what I was just working on when you joined. I'm like, oh crap. Right. So this this is, is yeah, yeah. This is gonna be one of those little tiny details. Um, the only way for you to do it is actually having a variable here. Mm, okay. So you have a, ver a temporal variable, whatever you want. First. Yeah. Right. Now you write it out uh, for you put a list as a string. If whatever you want would be F1. Mm -hmm. And now here you're going to refer to that variable um, as a double deference, which... <laughs> As I have, um, if I understand, this is going to go soon. And by the way, there, there needs to be a space there. This is going to go away soon. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to remove it or something. And I'm, I'm just wondering, like, how would you do that? How would you, how would you call a, a variable that contains a dynamic variable? So how would you do that in Outer Hotkey 2? I don't know. But this is how you would have to do it, right? Now, uh, your code should then look like this. And you would have to do that for every single one of them. The reason why people like this is because it's like sure. very neatly one liners, Absolutely. but you could do the same with what you said, like a, uh, um, um, Here's what I was also thinking is after I had written it all out, I was thinking maybe there's a way to shove it all into an object and be iterating over it and actually simplify it to some degree, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I would go. Um, you see, F two, as F two is has kind of like a value there. I could have right. a, a, an array that I just pass F two to the array, so I have an array, and pass F two to it like right. this, and that is gonna return. If it is reload, it is just gonna go ahead and execute the command that I wanted, right? So, uh, for example, reload. I could do something like that, but that would be a, an object that I create myself gotcha. to behave that way, right? Right. So I would just put in there what the value is, and I would execute the um, function for that particular. Uh, uh, oh well, post the message. I would say like post, and it would know which message to use for each of the variants of the array. So that would be a little bit more complicated, but the code would look. The code would look easier to understand and so on. That's where you trade right. off those things, right? So right. let's go ahead and do something, but, which is what on, it was. One other quick yeah. question before we divert, because this is the other thing that kind of perplexed me. On 47 through 50, at, on the left part, the F2 doesn't have percents with it. And yet on the right, 
where they're combining it with the other things, it does. And that was just, a, to me, it was just weird. Right. Well, no. It, it, so you, you have to understand what is going on there. So he's doing a double reference. At some point, what I would understand by this is you, you see this edit uh, name? Mm -hmm. He's using it also as a variable. At right. some point, yes. he used edit as a variable. So for each of those guys... Yeah, line, uh, tw 20, I think it was. 21. Uh -huh. 20, right? Is 2021, that um, not exactly. No? So those are the indexes. He's just doing those. He's adding the names in there. That's not the problem. At some point... Now, what I'm understanding is that if one you see this f oh no hold on so f2 has the words edit pause suspend but f1 has something else oh so f1 would have a this menu item mm -hmm. so hold on why do you have an a this menu item in here if you're not in a loop How? oh because this 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 whole thing is being called inside the loop very likely. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? As I said when we started, it was very dense code. You know? Right. So, so, so uh, again, this is the funny thing. So it looks like interesting. It looks like, wow, that's cool, whatever. But the problem is that it creates a little bit of an issue if I try to understand your code. What happens? He's using a this menu item, which mm -hmm. is a variable that only exists in a loop. But mm -hmm. this, is, this is actually a... Um, uh, oh, you know what? I know what is going on. This is a menu. When the menu gets called, that oh, I'm I'm, I'm actually I got confused. It is not a menu. It is not. It is not a loop. This is the, the menu item, right? Exactly. So this is the menu that got called, right? Right. Fine. Now, depending on the menu that got called, this the first part of the string split is the menu item. Okay. So that would be. Uh, so can you show me the script? That would be right. Right click it. Right click it. Right. So that would be two. The number two is the one. And this is amazingly complicated because it seems to be that number two now has a variable in it. So he has this. This would be the index here. Um, a list, a index. So this a index. Yeah, he's using it as a variable. As you can see, number one. So this one in here, uh, and this is the part. This is the part where trying to understand it yourself is a problem. You better just run the code, break on it, right, and then you just go ahead and take a look at what the hell is going on. Right. So we have a index two here, and um, look at the variables here: f f f one f two. You see those? Those are variables that are supposed to be created by the string split. You will see that later mm -hmm. on. But um, look at that. A list one has a handle. A list 10 has a handle. You see that? So now whenever you get this A index here, so A index is two, but what you're referring to is what two has in it. As I still cannot see it because I don't see the numbers around here directly, maybe the local, no. So it is a global thing. Zero would be zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead is that I'm going to create a variable var that is going to contain a index to see what the heck he is okay. having right there. So now the variable here should contain something. And again, that is empty, it says there. Oh, hold on. No. Instead, I use, I'm used to working in, um, how do I say this, on... Uh, expressions this is not an expression this is basically the number two that's basically the number two the number that's the number that is getting there the so i'm sorry that script right that it's so that's up. okay that's the number that's okay but when we are down here it is a little bit different because here you are inside an expression okay so you are inside an expression here and this f1 actually means whatever that f1 has inside yeah, which I, is a little bit complicated yeah, right i am just because it was pretty obvious right the f2 is the first thing that that is the other one 
But what was weird to me was just how, but I hadn't seen the percent sign at the beginning of right. Where this guy yeah. here. That, and if I had seen that, that would have helped me go, okay, now, right. now we're That's in number one. Here. So yeah. this is number one. This yeah. is number two. So what you're having here is the variable, uh, for example, a list 11. Well, that's not in there. So a list, and that is going to have a number in there, a list one, a list two. And right. that's what is going to bring up um these guys here a list one is going to bring an id so a handle so basically if you hit edit it's going to post the message to that handle right that you are at that particular point which is the one that we get when you click so when you click the item you're going to get a number so that's what is going on now let's go ahead and not do any of that let's just break whenever let me put it on oh. Sometimes the the stops don't. We well, and you might want to enable thirty five and get rid of thirty six since that's the one that actually works. Okay, so let me go ahead and verify. No, but uh, I want to, for example, when I'm debugging, what I want to know is um, why doesn't it work, right? So let's go ahead and verify what yeah, happens. I thought, we were gonna, I thought we were gonna look at the actual values in there when it does work and then figure it out. But oh, okay. Oh well, because when it does work, I know what he's. Okay. looking at so he split this guy in two which is divided by a number on one side and a name on the other so think, yeah right that's what he's getting at now the reason what we want to know is why is the second one not working if i'm also splitting it in two sections f1 should have the the number and f2 should have the text right so and, and, and it does it's just how to implement it properly um at least i think it does i i saw the f2 did the s so let's let's go helped. ahead and just click on one so i click on this guy and the script should break it didn't um so i thought that it would try jumping to an edit instead because that that has that logic of 38 oh, i'm sorry yeah so this one actually number two reloads the script i'm sorry i don't see that i thought that this would get hold on so we have menu choice those menus are created and whenever you click on one of them it should huh let me just one second. First of all, let's verify that we have this. Oh, by the way, no, no, no. I know what is going on. So probably, probably I'm running the wrong script. That's all. And we, yeah, and we click it. And click, oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, hold on. How, how do you go out of the script itself? Well, is, is it listed there, the master tray icon? Yeah, it is. Well, click it. Click that. Is master no? Right click. Uh huh. And is master tray icon listed in there? Um, tray. What? No, it's not. So, so you're. No, no. I, I. So what I want to know is if it could just go ahead and remove that script, and it doesn't I, have I know, kind of. That's where, it have... Remember, I told you how he he was hiding it in his thing, but I disabled yeah. that. But I don't even see if it has an exit. It doesn't have an exit hotkey, and the oh, only thing that it does is to reload. So yeah, we'll and then reload it, and then it'll, it'll yeah make effect. Now is that yeah that that would be the same one. Now escape. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, we're gonna keep that in there for now. So what yeah. I want to know is I want to run it. Right now it is there. So now if I go ahead and click on one of them, for example, the second one, ah, there we go. Now it jumps into it. Now this F is the one that I'm actually kind of like um, wondering about. And now F is an array. Very good. And we have one and two. Number one should have um, the, the number. So that would be two, right? And number two would have edit. So this right now 
should be equals and it should go inside it, it is so it, it does doesn't, it doesn't trigger the command right? no because now here the issue here was was this, the, this is about the the variable itself which right. the way to do that would be using this guy so let's go ahead and fix that so how it goes is like let's just make the a list f1 we're going to see variable there and here what we're going to do is use var but as a reference to um, a number. So that would be a list two. So and, yeah. just, to, just, just to pause here, because for people who, and I think I know this, but I'm not sure, because that's where it gets a little tricky, right? That you, People would look at it and go, no, it's just a variable. No, because to the left of it, we have the other percent sign, which means treat this as an expression. Right, exactly. When you do we that, are inside says, an expression. Yeah, yeah. Don't That's exactly that. right. What it's referring to. Right. It, yeah, so, so, so this is the funny thing. And the, in, in here, you will see it very clearly when I go ahead and debug. So I go ahead and do this. I go ahead and, hold on, where is it? Right click. Let's go ahead and do number two here and edit. Now, you will see that now the variable here is going to contain an, an, a name, a list two, but that's a string. That is not. Uh, uh, now, inside an expression, if I use the word bar with percent signs inside an expression, right. it is going to behave differently as if I use it without, if, without the percent signs. If I right. use it without the percent signs, I'm going to get exactly that a list two uh -huh. in there but if i put the percent signs it's gonna grab a list two and it's gonna treat it as a variable and it's gonna look for whatever is in there right exactly so now if i go ahead and step through it when i send the message now i'm going to be sending a message to a the a list two which would be a list one two to right. this it's gonna grab a list two and it's gonna try to get whatever is inside of it and send the message to it, which I don't know what that means. So look at that. It actually paused something in there. I don't know what it is. Studio, I think, is what you're on. Right. So so, so if you hit edit, it goes ahead and pauses it. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, we, we, we've probably got our wires crossed on something, but yeah. It's, okay. At least it's, at, it's it, it did something. It is, it is something in there. I, I do understand. So it did send a message to it, mm -hmm. and that was to the correct icon because this is the one for AHK Studio. So it got the thing. It seems to be that the um, the message here might not be the correct one. So, oh, there it is. So you see this message that I'm sending? 45, uh, 65403? Yeah. 65403 is pause, actually. Yeah. So it did exactly what it was supposed to. Yeah, I think when uh, I looked at it, I was like, oh, these are all identical. And I, I didn't. <laughs> no, they're not identical. So, <laughs> and so edit would be 401 which if we change it here oh sorry if i copy this change it here now this would be correct that would be the edit one and if we run it um let me go ahead and unpause this pause it and i go ahead and do hk studio edit it would jump into it and that i don't know what that does what is the edit on that it pulls it up and all oh, right. Okay. So when you hit edit, it goes ahead and pulls it up, right? Which is oh. uh, what is right between that and kill um, or you know exit are the two things I really use this for. So when I have a just a, a, a script running that doesn't have an icon, this allows me to either edit it or kill it. Right? There's the right well, other stuff, but those are the two things I typically use it. For. But oh, so it loads the the script into your default editor. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I got it. So now um, I know that the reload button is different. Okay, so that's okay. Now that's good. And now I would just need to duplicate those guys. So well, well or good. you know, and I don't think we need to do it in the video. But um, is we 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 do one more, and then we look at it, and we adapt it into an actual object, right? Because because I think right that exactly. But in this case, I would just. For example, now instead of just I just duplicate the line, select suspend, put the number here. 
and I would do exit now. It's the same. So now I have the whole menu again. I have the whole thing with lit, and now I could just control K that, right? So that would be all. And now I have the exact same code. Now, this is the part that it is a little bit annoying. I don't like doing this. Mm -hmm. It's having a variable inside a variable to then call it. And basically having um, a name like bar is not good. So that would be, sure. yeah. I would put their control um, handle. That's what it is. And that's what, I, that's what, what the variable does. So that's what I would put there. Now everything looks a little bit more, oh, I'm sorry. So this would be, this is what looks, uh, makes a little bit more sense. Now I'm missing the message number two. I don't know if it was there or not. Um, so yeah, but this is how you would go around trying to figure those guys out. And especially if you just break and look at it, it makes a little bit more sense sometimes. You, you right away know what is going on. And, but I think the problem that you are having is about this thing that if you had never had this issue before, right? It, it is a little bit difficult to, to, to get around it. But if you are going, if you are inside of an expression, right? And in this case, right. you have to do it right. because the variable is a yeah. dynamic variable, right. right? So that variable changes, then um, it is a little bit. Um, annoying. So this one here, this A list is better to have it as an object so that you could say, for example, A list one, for example, you see that? So it, this number here would be the number, the F one number, you see that? So I could pass an object called A list that I could pass this yeah, instead of that. having, instead of having to do this double thing. This is what I would do. Right. So I would I would have an object, this A list here that he's creating here on the top, mm -hmm. instead of making it like this, which is a pseudo array, yeah. I would create a real array. Right. And then I don't have to do well, this double deference and stuff. That's what is gonna happen. Like I said, well, because I, I mentioned some other things of you know, tweaks I think we'll at some point make to this. Um, mm -hmm. when we go down that route, we'll we'll adapt yeah. that object and stuff. But um, awesome, very cool. There you go. All right, cheers. Welcome.